Good morning, all of you. I warmly welcome you to the series of webinars organized by the NIFS to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the National Institute of Fundamental Studies. Today's talk will be delivered by Dr. Ajit Gunavarkona, Deputy Director, Research and Development of the Central Environmental Authority, Sri Lanka. His talk will be on ecosystem evaluation for environmental assessment. Now, I would like to kindly invite the co-chair of the 40th Anniversary Commemoration Committee, Professor Deepal Subhasinghe, to introduce the speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shani. Dr. Ajitkuno Ardhana is the Deputy Director, Research and Development, and is also the Acting Director of Research and Development in Central Environmental Authority of Sri Lanka. He obtained his uh, BSc Special Degree with a class in Agriculture in 1998 from the University of Peravini. And he got his uh, MSc Degree in Agroforestry. Uh, and in areas of uh, forest ecology, GIS and remote sensing, and natural resource management from the PGIA. And then he earned his PhD in remote sensing and forestry in 2014. He has worked as a visiting lecturer in subjects like GIS and remote sensing, advanced remote sensing, and biodiversity, etc., at several universities in Sri Lanka, including the University of Peradeni and University of Colombo. He also served as an advisor or coordinator in GIS and remote sensing fields to a number of institutes, such as Coconut Cultivation Board in Sri Lanka. He was a key resource person for GIS and RS, which is remote sensing training programs conducted by CEA for other agencies and in-house programs. He was awarded uh, several awards, including the first place in a national one in Sri Lanka, the online GIS competition in 2017, and presidential awards for scientific publications in 2014. And he has uh, made uh, significant contributions to numerous national committees. He also received national level awards and certificates for nature and wildlife photography. He's a, he's a gifted artist and a talented photographer. He has published a large number of significant publications and recently he published a book called Significant, Journey to Unique Ecosystems in Sri Lanka. This is a key book to develop ecotourism in the country. And it's a very high quality, profitable type book. As I mentioned, he's a very talented photographer and also an artist. And most importantly, a nature lover. So let me welcome Dr. Ajit Rohanagunavardhana from the Central Environmental Authority of Sri Lanka, Dr. Ajit. Thank you, Professor Deepal. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me. This is very important session because the environment is uh, currently we should concern more, uh, more concern should be more, more concerned because there are a lot of activities ongoing. So they have, therefore, we have to think about more and more to how to conserve environment. So thank you, Professor Deepal, inviting me uh, to this kind of uh, uh, webinar series, especially National Institute of Fundamental Studies, their 14th anniversary. Uh, so I would like to thank everyone, especially the chairman and the director and all board members of the NISF to give this opportunity to me, share the knowledge among us. So. Basically, uh, uh, I am today talking about the ecosystems 
uh, ecosystem uh, services uh, and uh, guidelines to how to assess the environment. So uh, now I am starting the, my uh, presentation. It is uh, not the too technical one because some are not, not in the field of tech, technical. So therefore, some uh, I think uh, some of them are very familiar with the biology and ecology, but some are in the engineers, some are geologists. Uh, so then I thought uh, this presentation and this lecture should be conducted in uh, the general manner. So basically, we are living in the ecosystem. For example, the, we, ha we have atmosphere, biosphere, and lithosphere. And all these combined, this is the ecosystem, which is, which is called the living thing. We have a living thing and then the non-living thing, air, water, and soil. These are, we can get as a system, we call the ecosystem. So there are a lot of information about these species and birds, flora, fauna, and everything. But we are little talk about many of people are not talking about the ecosystem because the ecosystem are the, the component. That's mean all together live in that place. So if something happened to the ecosystem, all living thing will be in the danger. So uh, when we talk about the ecosystem, biodiversity is one of part of that ecosystem. For example, we call the biodiversity is a variety of life on earth and essential independence of all living. This is the definition, but I just put it in because the ecosystem highly supported to the biodiversity. So when we talk about the biodiversity, there are one component is called fauna. That means it started from the very small, uh, uh, that is primitive fauna to the highly developed fauna. We have fishes, reptiles, insects, uh, and uh, birds and everything. So we can, uh, all together, we can get it as a fauna. So in case of the flora, we have uh, lower plants to flowering plants, very high diversity. So this is uh, called the flora. But in case of the ecosystem, before talking about the ecosystems in Sri Lanka, we have to just think about why our ecosystems are important. Because we have high biodiversity in our country. For example, if you take the butterflies, we have around 245 butterfly species, and there are 21 are critically endangered. So if we are not doing something to the conserve the ecosystems and these species are in danger. So not only that, we have very high diversity freshwater species. For example, we have point endemic species. You can see in the right side top uh, photograph, it is a one kind of a very rare and point endemic species of we call the bandula petia or pantius bandula. These uh, fish live in very small area of the country all over the world. So these kind of highly sensitive ecosystems are in within the country. The thing is, uh, the, the other thing is we have reptiles also very high diverse reptiles and birds. Uh, there are a lot of birds. For example, in, in Sri Lanka, we have recorded around 453 species and we have around 33 migrant uh, endemic species. So these are live in the ecosystem. This, is, this, this chart is very important. For example, this is the chart of the, our uh, flora and fauna group with the endemic percentage and endemism. This is very important chart. Uh, if you, uh, this is very important for the teaching purposes and other things. So these are this, about the species, but we are talking about the ecosystem. As I mentioned, many books and publications are available for the species level, but very limited people are talking about the ecosystems and their conservation strategies. So ecosystem diversity is one of the 
very key factor we should consider. Why Sri Lanka is important from the ecology, right? You can see this is the satellite image obtained from the uh, high resolution satellite data. So, the, the, because we have many ecosystems, have you seen about this kind of map before? This, this is the biodiversity hotspot map developed by the IUCN. That means the biodiversity hottest area, the rich biodiversity area. That means species, ecosystems, and everything is very high area are plotted in the red color. Now, there are 36 places in the world. You can see here, in group of the Western Guards of India and Sri Lanka, whole Sri Lanka considered as a high biodiversity area. So now you can see why we are important such a uh, hotspot like hotspot, because we have a lot of ecosystems. We are talking about the, we have, this is number of species, this, this is number of species, but we know these kind of species diversity is lived in our natural ecosystem because our Sri Lanka has a very large number of ecosystem rather than the other countries. You can see here, if you take about the forest, we have tropical rainforest, dry mix, evergreen rainforest, moist rainforest, mountain forest, sub-mountain forest, thorn forest, and there are a lot of uh, forest types are available. And also, if you're talking about the grassland, we have savanna, patna, wet patna, dry patna grassland. So other thing is, if you talk about the wetlands, we are in, we are lived in actually the wet wetland country. If you talk about the Colombo, it's a wetland city. So we have number of wetlands in this country. So these kind of forest grasslands and wetland created massive number of ecosystems in Sri Lanka. If we just think about, uh, just talk about what are the ecosystems, because this is very interesting. That's why I put these kind of slides, the whole photograph taken by me. If you talk about the forest ecosystem, you can see if you go to the place like Karnelia, Singharaja, Nakia Denia, the Dadiagala, Kottava, like places, you can see like this very dense forest area. This is called the tropical rainforest. We, very high rain, uh, rainfall and very high rich in biodiversity and very dense forest. So this is a very important part of the country. These provide several habitat for the wildlife. So if you think about the, if you go a little further up, up to the country, for example, go to the uh, uh, lower Sri Pada area or Nakals area. You can see this kind of forest system, we call the sub-mountain or lower mountain forest. The species diversity much, some, some changes we can see from the tropical rainforest to sub-mountain forest. Then we, we will go to the further, like Morelia, Horn Plains, uh, like places, Haggala, like uh, places. We can see the mountain forest. The mountain structure is completely different from the lowland wetland, uh, we call the tropical rainforest, wet evergreen rainforest. Tree structure, tree pattern, species diversity, all are changing. But the thing is, we have very critical ecosystem. <laughs> we, we can call, uh, identify it as the mountain forest because we have very limited forest types in uh, forest types we call the mountain forest. So then we, if you go down somewhere like uh, Randenigal area, the, now you can see the wet semi evergreen type forest. This is somewhat in between the dry mix evergreen and the tropical uh, rainforest type in between characters. So these kind of forest you can see somewhere around the Randenigal area. So when you go to the dry zone, you can see the very high uh, 
timber value trees and some space between the special space between the trees are a little further but uh, dense tree density is little lower than the moist uh, semi evergreen but this kind of forest you can see in dry area if you go to the somewhere like puttalam hambantota and such area you can see like this is dry semi arid ecosystem but the thing is most of the people are think about this is the very important these forest are not valued than the rainforest that is not true because this is this thorny forest has different services montane forest has different services also tropical rainforest has different services but not similar each to other but the important is same so we have to import we we have to think about this is also very important rainforest also important and the montane forest are also important if you go to the grassland the our critical grass, grass grassland system is wet patna grassland if you go to the horn plains kikliamane area we have we can see different ecosystem in one ecosystem called the wet patna grassland this is very important grassland system because we have very limited if you go to the hantan and nakals low nakals area we can see the dry patna grassland basically dry patna grassland emerge due to the abandoned tea land for example in earlier time the tea lands now nowadays abandoned due to various activities these lands now are consisted with some kind of grassland we call the dry patna grassland if you go to the hantan area or somewhere like uh, nakals area these type of grassland we, uh, we can see also if you go to the somewhere like badulla passer area these type of savanna grassland also this is the another ecosystem then if you go to the inland ecosystem a wetland a wetland system you can see inland and the coastal ecosystem under the inland ecosystems inland wetlands we have some kind of swamp forest ecosystem this is the very important ecosystem located in kaluganga river basin this is called the swamp forest or singhala called the vaturana that means this is uh, represent very important point endemic species Uh, like horavel and the suanda these two plants only found in that ecosystems only so if you go to the dry zone area we can see uh, some kind of these kind of water holes with high biodiversity this is the one of the very important ecosystem in sri lanka we call the billu but unfortunately most of the people i think 90% of the total population we didn't see willu because willu are very far from our eyesight because these willus are located in mahaveli flood plain flood plain also mahavati flood plain area in the basically these are the very important ecosystem for the megafauna like uh, elephants especially in the willu elephants so if you go to the uh, uh, dry zone or wet zone we can see the riverine ecosystem very rich ecosystems in sri lanka if you think about the the eco ecosystems or plants in the riverine ecosystem in the dry zone area is very rich you can see it is from the satellite image very rich in greenish color rather than the surrounding area in the dry zone that means the riverine ecosystem is one of the our very important ecosystem in the country also we have lot of rivers you know we have 103 river basin consist of uh, many waterfalls and water holes so we have mangroves uh, around uh, 10000 to 12000 hectares mangroves located around the country also this is one of the very important ecosystem we call the sand dunes for example started from the manalkadu in the jaffna up to the panama 
there are a lot of uh, sand dunes located. These are the very important ecosystem because some bird species lay eggs in these sand dunes. <coughs> also, we have very nice beaches. These nice beaches are we call the or we call it is also a very important ecosystem. Also, we have sea grass bed as well as the coral reef. Now, with the lagoons, we have lagoons as well as the man-made ecosystem like tanks, wow, or paddy fields, and the forest plantation. So now you can see how rich country, ecosystem rich country we are living, right? So rather than the other countries, compared to the other countries, we have very rich ecosystems. So if we are, if we are doing any analysis or assessment, if not consider the ecosystem, that will be the very dangerous to the environment. So that's why I mentioned the ecosystem assessment is very important for the environmental assessment. For example, each ecosystem provides very different services. For example, the ecosystem provides timber, renewable energy, clean energy, carbon, food, flood protection, recreation and tourism, and give the knowledge. These are the whole, right, not in the, the proper order, these are the general terms. But if you put in the list, we can see the ecosystem services like it is for the balance, the nature, and the biological productivity, regulate the climate, degradation of the waste, cleaning of nutrients, control potential pests and diseases, detoxification of the soil and sediment, stabilization land against the degradation, carbon sequestration and global climate change, and the maintain the soil fertility. For example, I give the little example for you about how ecosystem service for the us, because we didn't know, right? We don't know how it is environment serve for the us. For example, if you are living in Kurunagar, just pass for the past the Kurunagala town, very high temperature, very uncomfortable. But we, if you are just past, past in the Badagamu area, like very nice forest, both sides of the uh, road, you just stop the car or your vehicle. Now you can feel very comfortable. Why? It is the regulation of the microclimate. So now we we know how the ecosystem services are important for us. According to that, the ecosystem services basically categorized in four systems, like four components, like supporting services, because they support us to nutrient cycling, soil formation, and primary production. But unfortunately, we cannot see the nutrient cycling, soil formation, and primary production by our naked eyes. But we can feel it. If we go to the provisioning, they provide us food, fresh water, wood, fiber, and fuel. Right? Now we can see the provisioning one because we can get it, we can touch it. Right? Then the regulating is something different climate, climate regulation, flood regulation, disease regulation, and water purification. We cannot see. But if you think and if you think deeply and concerned about these regulating services, we can feel it. And also, we have very important one: the ecosystem-based cultural services. We have aesthetic value, spiritual value, educational and recreational value. So these are the very important ones. So this basically the, we can make a circle like this, supporting, provisioning, cultural and regulating one. But I skip this one because we, you know, what is the food, all right? Uh, for example, regulating, it, it regulates the air quality, climate, waste regulation, erosion control, water purification, nutrient hazard protection, and biomeditation, 
ിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിംഗ്ലിം
prevention of the soil erosion of the land degradation and sediment retention or sediment export or annual soil loss we didn't calculate but we can do it for the ecosystem services analysis so in ultimately if you are doing such a study or such a system development if you click some area like this kind of parcel land parcel we can get the all the information about the ecosystem services right this is very important for the environmental assessment so to fulfill fulfill that gap we initiate the research study oh, about on the kamara uh, sub river basin in the mahavali sub river basin the nakals area so i am going to explain about how we did it and what we get it and how we can use it this is the case study so this is the methodology i am not going to explain about this is the in the technical manner but just i put the methodology in the flow diagram we use several kind of information for example satellite data vector information gps data and we went to the field and get the information about the field sampling and other data and the expert knowledge of different field for example ecology biology and uh, sociology and uh, gis and all the information we gathered and use using that information we use several kind of software uh, like uh, invest that mean the ecosystem service analysis software and the gis and satellite remote sensing we used and we identified that area the fog interception stream order habitat quality biodiversity and carbon total carbon total above ground carbon below ground carbon and dead carbon and everything and sediment export and retention of the particular area nutrient uh, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus export that area and mineral resources especially scenic quality and the education awareness information and all these information we assessed using that software and the expert knowledge so ultimately what we have done is we can develop a normalized map and categorize and the ranking and we did a uh, very nice special description of each and every each and every ecosystem services this is the study area we followed the first thing is the more, most important thing is we have we did a very precise land use map if the land use map is not precise is something something in error the whole map or output is not in proper order that's why we prepared a very precise land use map with the very intensive field work then some kind of methodologies i am not going to about the methodology we we were able to develop a habitat degradation and habitat quality map this is habitat degradation mean if something happen for example if something happen happen in the field for example creation of the road or development plots like uh, development projects if happen what will be the habitat which habitat is the most vulnerable right this is the habitat degradation map also other side the, the second map is we call the habitat quality the highest quality habitat are located in this area and medium quality and this is the depend on the normalization values also we were able to do a uh above ground carbon map using the satellite technology using the uh, normalized difference technique with the incorporation with the some kind of uh, field data and below ground carbon and soil carbon and soil dead carbon these are some kind of gis and the remote sensing application we were able to develop that, that one and finally <coughs> we did a very precise total carbon map of the area have you any experience about this kind of information for the environmental assessment especially in the environmental impact assessment 
Do we think about it? No, because if we have these kind of base map, so we can say for the project proponent, this area is highly soil carbon or total carbon carbonated area. It consists of a lot of carbon. So if you are doing something in that place, this carbon pool will be damaged. So if we have this kind of base information, this is very important for the future environmental assessment. So this is the same. Other thing is the nutrient deliver ratio. That's when we mean the nitrogen export. We did the same for the phosphorus exports. Also, the sediment delivery. That means the particular land parcel, what amount the amount of sediment deliver from particular area to another particular area. This is the, the total potential soil loss. So this is really very important for having this kind of information for the environmental assessment. This is the sediment export. This kind of information we used. Sediment retention, that means the, the potential area to retain the sediment from the soil erosion. So these special information also we collected. And stream order and the stream density. This is the stream density. This is very important because the, this is directly correlated with the fauna, flora, and habitat quality. We develop the, this kind of research, uh, uh, this research developed for uh, stream density using the remote sensing and GIS technique. Now you can see the stream order. Stream order one means the streams started from particular area to another particular joint for the another uh, stream. That is called the stream order one. In Mahavali River, we can see up to the stream level eight or seven. So this is the this stream order calculated by the GIS technique because this is this stream order one is very important for the wetland, the wet wet wetted area because this stream order one area is highly supportive for the biodiversity and habitat quality. Also, this is the headwaters we have identified. That means the generation area of the streams and we have calculated using some kind of uh, image interpol interpolation, Im image uh, analysis technique. Also, fog interception. The fog interception is the how trap the clouds of fogs from the trees and get the precipitation from the high elevation, like more than 1,500 above area of the meters from the sea level. For example, you can see that lower bottom of the area of the, that study area is highly uh, supportive for the fog interception. Also, we assess the, assess the scenic quality. <laughs> for example, if we go to some, some places like Knuckles or the places, so we can, we can see this place is very nice. But we don't know how to assess. So we have some kind of model. We use the scenic quality. We call the V-shed and V-shed quality models. But there are a lot of information. For example, if you go to some kind of places, like uh, some uh, particular places like a viewpoint or something like that. So we can see here up to that place, what are the buildings, telecommunication towers, holdings, boards, and other unnecessary things if you, we can see that from that place we can give the negative negative mark from that particular point so likewise we using the satellite information and other information we have already developed the scenic quality map of that particular study area so if something happened in the number of number 4 it is very high scenic quality area the entire area will be affected. For example, if, if some project is initiated, number four area, the high V-shaped quality area, that will be affected entire V-shaped quality. Also, we assess the tourism and recreational value, right? This is the tourism and recreational, also we graded. This is the fauna. 
This is the left one is the endemic fauna distribution. At the moment, we don't have these kind of base information. This is the spatial distribution, potential spatial distribution of the endemic fauna. And the right side one, the threatened level, threatened fauna, right? That means vulnerable, uh, endangered, and nearly threatened species are especially mapped, critically endangered species also. Not only the fauna, the fauna also, the endemic fauna distribution and the threatened fauna, flora distribution, en endemic flora distribution and the threatened flora distribution also especially, especially assessed. Now you can see, if we have these kind of information, we can easily assess the environment, right? Okay, the, after that, what we have done is we categorize all these maps and spatial develop information into four different group, groups. One is the physical services, biodiversity services, hydrological services, and aesthetics and recreational services. According to that, we were developed. Physical, uh, this is for the biological services map. That means high biological services maps are, uh, areas are located in very dark green color. And high hydrological services are appeared in this area. Right? Right? Okay. In the physical services like soil carbon, like in the physical services, we took at soil carbon, nitrogen, uh, soil loss, and mineral resources. According to that, the high physical services are provide some areas like very dark red, red in color. Also, the aesthetic and ecotourism services, which provide this dark green area, is very high important. Highly important. So these kind of activities we have conducted. So ultimately, we overlay composite map using biological services, hydrological services, physical services, and recreational and ecotourism services map into one layer. Now you can see this is the layer in the, in the screen. So according to that, we value the, our study area. Highly sensitive areas, sensitive areas, moderately sensitive areas, and low sensitive and very low sensitive area. This is the case study. This case study proved we can do it. Right? That, that is the very important thing. We can do it. Right? We have potential to do it. If you have such system, such, such baseline information in our computer, right? We can easily assess the environmental impacts, right? Okay. So in this team, right? This is the team. The basically this research study conducted by the Central Environmental Authority, the myself and one of my colleagues. Before they start this project, I just asked for the Professor Sirilujya Sundara and uh, Professor Nimal Gunawadana and Professor Nimal Gunatilaka, sir, I want you to do this kind of research study because we don't have the information about the baseline information. So, lucky to say, all the scientists voluntarily supported, for example, from Sirilujya Sundara here, uh, Dr. Shaman Nidanege, uh, Professor Nimal Gunawardhana, this is the forest department, and Professor Deepal and uh, Dr. Suranjan here, uh, Emeritus Professor Nimal Gunatilaka and the Dr. Jagad Gunawardhana. All, all members of the team voluntarily supported to success this project. So now you can see we have very good potential to assess the environment 
through the ecosystem services. We don't go, we don't want go on, we don't want to go entire ecosystem services particular area. At least we should assess the biological or biological services and the at least hydrological services is I think it is quite enough at the beginning level. At the beginning, it is enough. So I think uh, I just basically talk about the ecosystem services. In the, uh, is basically I started from the, my presentation in the, what are the ecosystems in Sri Lanka, why it is important, why in Sri Lanka important, as an ecosystem, because we have a very diverse ecosystem. So then I explained about, we have environmental assessment system, whether we use the ecosystem services for the environmental assessment, still not, but other countries they are using. So we have potential. So then I explained what we have done for the pilot projects. Currently, we are initiated that this project in further two sites in Hantana and the Maragala. Right? Hantana and Maragala. We are doing the same study with the further improvement with some soil sampling at the more, uh, more step further. We, we, we put more, more step. And we uh, prove we can do it. So, uh, so for, uh, my presentation is limited uh, about 40 to 45 minutes. Now it is uh, time is uh, over. So I think this is very important for everyone, those who are interested about the conserve the environment. So finally, my thanks go to Professor Deepal Subhasingha who invited me for the deliver this kind of basic presentation and the director and the chairman of the NISF and other members to give support. Also, most of the, our central environmental authority officers are engaging this presentation because they are the leaders or pioneers for the environmental assessment process. Also, in our director general of central environmental authority and the deputy director general of the HRD finance and admin, uh, to share this uh, presentation, uh, that this webinar session to our staff also. So my thanks go to that uh, person.